Hey guys, I'm excited to do another video today as part of my series and showing you how I lost the last 25 pounds, especially after I became an overeater on the plant-based diet. Um, so today, this is the most fascinating thing I learned when I really started to dig into the science was learning about the cost of digestion and the thermic effect of feeding. And so that's what we're really going to dig into today. And for me, when I understood this, everything in my brain just like lit up and I got it. I was able to make better food choices. I was able to know what to eat like it just broke it down for me in the most simple way I was like oh I get it now that's how it all works okay so anyway let's sort of um dig in a little bit so oh this is from Instagram today because I want to keep it real and honest so I've been showing my abs just to prove like yes I really have maintained this for three and a half years um admittedly I probably shouldn't have had so much soy sauce last night I wasn't planning to model today but anyway um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video yesterday and leaving comments and voting in the polls. It meant the world to me to know that you guys listened and that it helped you and that you loved it. And I was so fascinated by the results. So a funny thing is originally I was going to make overeating and snacking like a single option. And in the last minute, I was like, I'm just going to divide those two because they're not necessarily the same. But it turned out that that was like 63% of what everyone's biggest struggle was. So I was sort of already kind of cosmically there with you. Oh, oh, I see people saying hi in the comments. So hi. And like I said, thanks again so much for voting. I'm going to do a really awesome video. I can't wait to just do this massive presentation on overeating and all the like tricks and tools and ways I stopped doing it and like what you can do and it's just, it's going to be so fun. I can't wait to do that one next. But today we have to do some science. So a quick recap in case you're just joining us or you forgot what happened yesterday. I'm sharing everything I learned and did to break my weight loss barrier, to lose the last 25 pounds. Like I said, I was an overeater because of all those magical calorie things. Um, and yesterday I revealed that my biggest culprit was number one, overeating just like yours and thinking that vegetables had magic calories that don't count. And um, number two, that some foods have more calories than advertised because of their lower cost of digestion, which is the cool science we're digging into today. And since overeating, like I said, was also what you guys voted as your biggest struggle, I can't wait to share all my strategies with you, how I stopped overeating and um, they're, they're great. They're simple. They're easy. You'll be able to apply them right after the video, but not today. That's the next one. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I'm also going to tell you what to eat and why it works and the science behind it because today is science day. So you can apply it to yourself immediately. And in this video, there are seven awesome super duper swaps that you're going to be able to make with your food today using this magic secret science that I use to lose my 25 pounds. So we're going to get to that. And like I said, this is an incredible opportunity to get your weight loss going again with my science-based blueprint. I'm so glad somebody's benefiting from all this insane research I've been doing for the last two and a half years. Really guys, I think at this point I've read something like a hundred studies, 50 books. Scott actually asked me to compile a list last night and I had to stop because I tired myself out before I finished. Uh, anyway, let's get going. So the thermic effect of feeding, which I'll probably say TEF sometimes because I forget that not everyone knows what TEF is. Um, and so anyway, today's fun lesson is on the thermic effect of feeding and the surprising discovery, annoying, surprising discovery that some foods have more calories than advertised because of their lower cost of digestion. And like I said, this area was super, super fascinating to me and I'm totally going to geek out with you and I apologize. Uh, so here's what you're going to know by the end of this video. You're going to know what to eat and why. Yay, science. Why counting calories never worked perfectly for you. This was my most fascinating discovery at all here. The two best foods to eat, because I know you guys like actionable stuff. And snacking, like I said, was the second biggest issue. And I have a whole bunch of case studies for you today. One's Laura, one's Jeff. There's another one too. And what it is, is I just know that you guys like real examples. I know I like examples. I'm like, somebody give me an example. Like, show me step by step. I need an example, so I'm doing that for you. So that's what's kind of going on there. It's, I get it. It's helpful. Um, all right. So let's get in. Have you ever tried to count calories and find it didn't work perfectly? If so, please raise your hand. Say yes in the comments. Hi, yep, yeah, me. Oh, hi, everybody. But it, seriously, like, have you used apps like MyFitnessPal or Weight Watchers or anything, and you were so perfect, like, you tried to count and, like, do it all, even by longhand, and it just didn't work so perfect for you? Like, was, am I the only one that it never worked for? Like, I was like, why isn't this math working? I'm not going over my calories. I'm still not losing weight. Anybody? 
Okay, cool. So the thermic effect of feeding explains why this happens. After eating a meal, your metabolic rate increases and heat is produced, energy expenditure due to the cost of digestion. I know, lots of science words. I'm definitely gonna break that down. Okay, so this response of when your body starts to like burn energy after you've eaten, which the simpler word for this is cost of digestion. You just don't sound so smart when you say it, but this response has been termed the thermic effect of feeding. There's a lot of other words out there for it as well. Dietary induced thermogenesis is my favorite because you sound so smart when you say it. Um, but it's just another fancy way of saying the cost of digestion. And so what is the cost of digestion? This is the part that matters most with weight loss, so it's what we're gonna spend all our time on. Um, but every food has a different cost of digestion. What this means is the energy, which is calories, energy and calories are the same word, but every food has a different cost of digestion. And the energy required by your digestive system to break down the food, take out the nutrients it offers, and then transport, store them, do whatever it's gonna do, whether it's gonna go into your um, muscles or your brain, whatever. So it's this cost, it's the internal workings of your body, all your organs doing the things that they're supposed to do, it's that. Like all day long, our bodies are burning calories doing the things that they need to do, and digestion is a big damn laborious deal, and so a lot usually gets spent in this process, and that's what this is the cost of digestion. But different foods have a different cost of digestion, which is what we're gonna get into. So how all of this TEF cost of digestion stuff affects weight loss. And this is what I found the most fascinating and this was sort of like my secret to figuring out how to make food work for me instead of working off my food. So the more tender, soft, or finely divided, which is again a fancy way of saying processed, a food is, the more easily it is digested. Like it's just easier to digest. It's sort of like how your blender is pre-chewing your food for you. This is all super logical. You're probably nodding your heads. Are you nodding your heads? You're nodding your heads. Um, so when something is soft, tender, or finely divided or processed, Lily is excited, this makes the cost to digest lower, which means you gain calories on the back end. I know, what? I was just like, wait, hold on, come again. What are you saying? <laughs> So the processing, you know, breaking things down, that's like pre-digesting. Like I said, the smoothie is like basically your blender chewing it up for you. Um, that ends up causing less metabolic effort in your body because one, you're not chewing, so you're not getting the calories that you would have chewed, but also because it's already pre-digested for you, your stomach doesn't have to break it down as much. There's just a lot less having to happen. And if you're sick or you're older or you're supremely underweight, this is amazing news. That's why it's so good for cancer patients to often have like these blended things. But when you're trying to lose weight, like you, you want your body to be working for you. You don't want to be making it easier. You don't want to be saving energy and using less calories. So so that's where you see where I'm going with this secret. If not, don't worry, we're going to get there. But basically by eating these processed foods, you're making your body more efficient, meaning your body needs less calories. Okay. So I had to come up with an analogy to break this down in my brain. So I'm going to, this is how I understand it because I get it. It's super complicated science. So here's my analogy and I hope you love it as much as I do. So Using your car, I love the car analogy, I know, as a GPS, eating processed foods is like speeding in your car. It's like driving faster. When you plug in a destination, and you can see I did Disneyland, um, your GPS provides an estimated time you're gonna reach your destination, assuming you're following the speed limit. The time estimate, the minutes, that's your assumed daily calories. If you speed, you're gonna get there a whole lot faster. And that's exactly what's happening when you eat these processed foods. All right, I know, isn't it a cute, I, I like this analogy. Um, so sort of kind of coming back how to all this works is processed foods, like certain processed foods, like uh, salty delicious potato chips, they're requiring less metabolic effort in the body. And less metabolic effort means, like I said, you're saving energy, you're speeding it up, you're using less calories. And sort of like with the GPS, you're just getting there faster. You're just doing it faster. You're not using as much time. I also like the analogy of pilots who leave the airplane, like you leave really late and they're like, oh, don't worry, we're gonna make it up in the air. <laughs> and you're like, okay, is that safe? That's also what's happening with 
sort of this processed food is you're just making it easier. It's faster, it's quicker, it's less calories to digest, it's just less. You're just becoming more efficient. If you've listened to my Shortcut to Slim podcast, I talk about being a Prius versus a Hummer and you're making yourself a Prius. So that's what's going on there. And sort of here's another way to think about it. Processed food makes your body more efficient at digesting, speeding that process up. You lose calories that you would have normally burned. That's what it really hit me is I was like, oh, especially if you're counting and you get this number, you think like you have this many calories a day. Well, if you're cheating and you're speeding and you're eating foods that require less and you're getting the calories back on the back end, that estimate is wrong. You're actually needing less because you're making it easier on your body. And so I was like, oh, it just, this all really clicked for me. Like this was not the good strategy when you're trying to slim down. You don't want to be eating foods that can be digested even easier. I want to have foods that are digested not so easy and make my body work for me. Like, why am I helping it out? Like, no, I want it to like get, help me in a good way. <laughs> you know, that's sort of how I felt. And so that's where we're going to talk a little bit more about today. Okay. So here is where we get screwed. When we look at a label of salty, delicious potato chips, and we see that it has 160 calories, we believe we are only consuming 160 calories. Me, I would look at labels of all kinds of food, not just potato chips, but any food, you name it, I would look at it and think, okay, 160 calories, got it, um, minus 1,200, so I got what, a, th- a little over 1,000 left for the day. Woo, I'm, woo, I'm done. No. No, 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 that's not how it works because I'm going to gain an unknown number of calories on the back end due to this cost of digestion and TEF. And once I got this, it really started to make it really easy for me to pick better choices, which we're going to get into. All right. So I wasn't going to include this in my presentation originally, but uh, I was testing it on my husband and he's like, you didn't say your thing. And I was like, what thing? And he's like, your hundred calorie thing. And so for Scott, here it is. Um, you know, intuitively, you know, all this, you know, that a hundred calories of potato chips do not satiate you the same way as a hundred calories of a baked potato. And I can say this about Oreos versus oranges. You know, this, if I give you a hundred calories of Oreos and a hundred calories of oranges, you're going to be like, Oh, of course the oranges are going to be so much more satiating. And the same thing is true about the nutrients. You know, that a hundred calories of carrot cake doesn't have the same nutrients as a hundred calories of carrots. And again, oranges, Oreos, whatever you want to use, you know this. And so it's completely logical that some calories are more easily absorbed or stored or that they might affect how you absorb and store future calories. And I don't know why I never considered that, but then when I saw all this science, I was like, oh, this is all completely logical. Like I said, intuitively, you know this. Okay, so now let's get into our case studies, which is, I think, where all of this science, which I know is kind of complicated, will really start to like connect for you when I use real people and how it worked for them. So my first case study was Laura. Laura's a lovely girl. She's, you'll hear all about Laura. And so Laura came to me and she hired me to be like a private coach for her. I worked for her privately. And she did this because she'd been counting calories for four months and she was like hopeless. She hadn't lost any weight. And she just was like, Lindsay, do you think you can help me? And I was like, yeah, let's sit down and have a conversation. So Laura showed up with the most detailed food journal I have ever seen. I have another client who's actually an engineer and she beat her. Like Laura's food journal, I I don't even know how to describe it. It was the most, she measured, weighed everything, not just like the weight, but how like and many inches it was. Like it was just the most detailed food journal I'd ever seen. I was like, are you an accountant? Like what's going on with this? So with most of my clients who are calorie counters, 99.9% of the time, the usual culprit with calorie counting, and this wasn't Laura, but usually it's my clients either underestimate how many calories a food really has, especially if they're using apps because they're super wrong. They overestimate how many calories they need to eat, or they overestimate how much they burn, you know, working out or whatever. That's also wrong. Those, those apps and stuff are way off and, um, nutritionists do this. I've worked with nutritionists who overestimate how many they need or burn and underestimate how much is in a food. So it's not just you. Don't feel bad about that. Um, And then also to a lot of my calorie counters, like conveniently forget random pieces of candy or samples at the store or tastes while cooking or my favorite, all of the hot sauce and mustard they're dumping on their food because 
the you know label says zero calories but it's not really zero calories when you go over one fourth a teaspoon and they definitely weren't doing one fourth a teaspoon i know i just said some very upsetting news to you guys it's not really free <laughs> but this wasn't laura like that was evident by her food journal but even sticking to 1100 calories and laura was about five four so this was actually appropriate for her she she couldn't lose any weight she was diligently 1100 calories and the weight no change for four months she tried lowering it at one point, and she said she was brain dead and miserable. She couldn't possibly go any lower. She tried to increase her calories, and she started gaining weight like these splits. So she just was like, I have no idea what to do, but I want, I want to break past this plateau, and I don't know what else to do. Lindsay, please help me. And so, um, it, like I said, Laura was very desperate, very discouraged, as I'm sure a lot of you are feeling right now. You probably relate very much to Laura. I know I did. I, like, started hugging her, and we cried together for a while. Like, I was like, I love you. I understand. Um, so here's how I helped Laura. When I looked over her food journal, the first thing I saw was that she was eating two slices of whole wheat bread every morning. And she was putting applesauce on top of them, which I thought was really clever because applesauce is a lot healthier than like a sugary jam. So I already was like, wow, this girl's really like, she's really tried. Like she's really, she's like me. She's like just trying to be as perfect as possible, um, which, you know, you heard me talk about yesterday. But I saw that Laura had two pieces of whole wheat toast with applesauce every morning. And she assured me like it was 100% whole wheat. It wasn't white bread with a tan. She told me it was vegan. She told me it had no oil. It had like no sugar. And she said the applesauce was literally just apples and cinnamon there was nothing else in it no sugar there either and so I said okay Laura I believe you I do I love you I believe you but are you willing to try something else for breakfast and she started to get nervous and I said listen I will provide something for you that's the exact same calories it's just gonna be a different food reluctantly Laura agreed so after we talked this was Laura's improved breakfast I basically said, okay, here's what you can do. You can either eat my recipe for digestive overnight oats, or you can have a sweet potato with cinnamon because she really likes the applesauce cinnamon combination. And Laura kind of looked at me like, what? I'm like, listen, I don't care which one you do. You can have either, but like, let's do that as your breakfast, okay? Like, let's just do that as your breakfast. Just try this for me. And by the end of that first week, Laura had lost almost a pound. It was like, 0.79 which was incredible this girl hadn't lost any weight in four months and she lost almost a pound the first week just doing this swap at her breakfast and she has such an amazing success story she just kept on losing weight she got to her dream destination which was 120 pounds she never thought she'd get there she got there she got there in time for her wedding and not like the day before but like a month before she had to get her dress taken in it was incredible it was so amazing to watch this transformation in laura to see how happy she was and I was as excited as she was. Like, she would call me and be like, I did it, I did it. And I was like, I know, I know. And we would just, like, dance around like schoolgirls on the phone. But it was just, this, you can have this. This can be your transformation. It was so amazing to see how something so simple, this little swap, because I knew about the thermic effect of feeding, and I used it, again, like, for her good. Like, I put it to work for Laura, which is what I want you to do. I want you to put it to work for you. It really is possible to do these, like, little things and see huge results. Amazing. Amazing. Um, and then also Jeff. So Jeff was another one of my clients who was trying to shred. He just wanted to get like really lean. Like he didn't want to necessarily lose a whole lot of weight. But um, I looked at his food journal and I noticed that every day he had a vegan protein bar and he's like, no, I have to have that because I work out like I have to. And I try to explain like, that's not how it works. Like, let me talk to you about science and nutrition. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I was like, all right, we'll just agree to disagree on this like protein thing after a workout. But how about you do this for me? How about you eat hummus with some vegetables instead of the protein bar? Because those things are super processed. Oh my gosh, they're so processed. I'm like, or how about you just eat like some raw nuts and a banana? And Jeff was like, okay, I'll try it. And sure enough, he shred. He like went down to body percentage fat. He was so happy. He lost like 2% of body fat. His abs started popping out. He was so happy, but mostly Jeff was like, forget that. I'm just so happy to not spend so much money because this is so much cheaper and so much simpler. Thank you. I love you. And I was like, oh, cool. Glad when. So that's another example there. And um, so what I'm going to take a break real quick to say is that you might not be able to completely overhaul your entire diet today. In fact, I tell you not to because you'll just get overwhelmed. 
But I know that there's probably one thing that you eat pretty regularly, like Laura's breakfast or Jeff's afternoon workout snack that could be upgraded to something that is more TEF friendly. That's something that using the thermic effect of feeding will make you lose weight easier without having to do all this extra work. And so we're gonna find some solutions for you today. So the two best foods to eat and why? Number one, an apple. Best food, there you go. It's low in fat, it's high in strong fiber, it's uncooked, which means it has an incredibly high cost of digestion. You can find them anywhere, gas stations, airports. We just did a little like challenge on Instagram a couple of weeks ago where I told people to go find them. People found them literally everywhere. There's no excuse. In fact, this is the only snack I'll ever eat. If I, I don't try not to snack, but if I do need to have a snack, this is what it is. It's always an apple. And apples also have a really nice little insurance policy. So eating an apple on a non-empty stomach will cause bloating and digestive issues in a lot of people. It's why a lot of people are like, I can only eat fruit on an empty stomach. Yep, totally true. Science has got you there. So most of us, because this naturally happens, it's why if we're like in the break room at work, we can magically pass the beautiful bowl of apples, but then we like, segue over to the cookies <laughs> because apples if your stomach isn't actually empty can often bother you but the other food doesn't and so it has its own little insurance policy if you are hungry like truly hungry like you really need the snack you have a biological need for it and you're not bored at work which some of us get sometimes okay all the time or you're having an emotional reaction like the apple's gonna sing to you and if it's not singing to you then you know so it's a really beautiful sort of policy and this is my personal mantra if i'm not hungry enough to eat an apple i'm not hungry which is why this the apple is my one and only snack other best food to eat is the potato which i know if you followed me for a while you won't find this very surprising why it's the most satiating food on the planet on the satiety index nothing comes close nothing comes is close to a cooked potato so it literally will zap any hunger that you have of course it too is high in fiber and it's the closest food to fat-free, and dietary fat is more easily absorbed as you know body fat. But I don't want you guys to start thinking, I hear it. I because this was me as the overeater. You hear like what? It's fat free? Like it won't store? What? What's going on? Is it free? Is it free? Can I have as many as I want? No. Because what did we learn yesterday? That vegetables all count. There's no such thing as like a hidden calorie or a magic calorie or that they don't count, even if you're standing by the fridge or in your car and these other things that we tell ourselves. Um, it doesn't count, it does. So I know, like I said, potatoes aren't free. Overeating on potatoes will make you store the fat in the other foods you're eating. It's how it works. So no, don't go crazy, but you can have them. And this is my favorite thing to have when I'm traveling, when I'm snowboarding. You guys have seen pictures of it. Um, I'm gonna show you one here in a second. But yeah, traveling, snowboarding, running around all day. Can you guess what I carry? That's right, potatoes and apples. When I don't wanna cook, this is a big one. When I don't wanna cook, what do I have? Potato, apple, and whatever green thing is in my freezer, whether it's peas or broccoli or spinach or whatever is in my freezer or it's green, it all goes together and that's my dinner. If I don't wanna cook, there I go. So that's that. When I sent this email out, all this information was in an email to my newsletter list this morning. A bunch of people wrote back saying that potatoes had no nutrition, so I felt really strongly that I had to include this, that yes, potatoes do. They have protein, three grams. They also have all these beautiful vitamins and stuff. So this idea that potatoes don't have food, no. I, the problem with potatoes is he, he keeps bad company. He hangs out with fried foods, you know, oil, and he hangs out with su sour cream and butter. Those things, problem. Potato, not. So anyway. The other good thing about a potato is that they're really cheap and yummy and they satisfy our brains and our bodies. Like they're just so satisfying and you guys know you eat potatoes, you know this. And there's me with my potato in my purse on the way to the opera. You guys laugh, but I'm telling you that was the best move ever. Okay, so here's my second case study, which is slimming options. So if you aren't familiar, I have meal plans, they're great. On the meal plans, I have, I have a couple of clients, like long-term regular customers who've been with me and using my meal plans for like a really, really long time. And uh, a lot of them do flour free, like they follow another policy that says they can't have flour. And so to make them happy and because I want to make them happy, I started including this slimming option with every recipe on the meal plan and it's always a flour free option. And I'm basically telling you how to swap brown rice, spaghetti squash, potatoes, whatever for 
pasta, noodles, buns, tortillas, whatever is normally called for in the recipe. And this was great. Not only did it make the people who are flour free super happy, my volume eaters were thrilled because now their portions got even bigger. Lily's a volume eater, that's why she's working. But yeah, so my volume eaters were thrilled, my flour free peeps were thrilled, but the best thing, the big surprise was how many people emailed me just over the moon excited that they started to lose weight again. Especially my people who were already out of weight, they were really happy with and they looked good. And they were like, well, if I lose five more pounds, cool, but really I'm at my goal. They went past it. They were like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could lose even more and look even better. This isn't crazy. It was amazing. And the slimming options have only been around for a few months, but the changes were just drastic and immediate. It was really, really, really big. And these folks, like I said, they didn't do anything different. They didn't change their total calories, but what they did was they changed what was making up those calories. They were spending their calories a little bit differently. And you know, this is just another really amazing example of the thermic effect of feeding winning, like for the win, making it work for you, making it your slave, however you want to say that. So if overeating is one of your culprits, and it probably is since it's like I said, it was like 69% of what you guys voted for, utilize my big secret. My big secret, which is doing these thermic effect swaps, choosing the little switch, tweak, whatever that puts thermic effect in your favor. Make it work for you. Take it. Own it. I'm giving it to you for free. Run with it. So here are some swaps. Um, one cup of cooked rice it has the exact same label calories as two ounces of dried pasta, but pasta has a lower cost of digestion. So in a recipe that calls pasta, you can just use brown rice. Um, one baked potato has the same calories as a hamburger bun or a hot dog bun, but it's a whole lot more satiating and it too also has a higher cost of digestion than the bun. So again, very simple, duper duper easy swap, really easy. And here's me doing it. Uh, this is me taking a potato to a ball game and putting all the toppings on it to have like a hot dog, but it's not really a hot dog. It's a potato hot dog, but these are these, you guys see me do this all the time. This is my secret. But now today, so kind of summering and all back into where we're headed to today because I've already had a lot of your time today. Thank you for listening and staying with me. So now today I can enjoy things like free tacos and not feel deprived or hungry. But recalibrating to that proper portion size from hungry, hungry hippo when I was eating four and five plates of food at a time because I thought I could eat as much as I wanted and I became an overeater. Recalibrating, reassimilate, that was not fun. But it is possible to do, and it takes time, but it's really, really simple, and you'll ugh, you'll be so glad you did it. Really, you will. You'll be so, so, so happy you did. Um, I used to think I needed to eat this much food, if not more. I can't even tell you how much food I got to eating. I just would eat so much food because I went to all these plant-based conferences as a, a speaker and heard the other speakers saying, like, eat a lot. Like, I can remember once being so worried that I'd had three plates of food, and they told me to eat more. <laughs> like, it was crazy. So I just became this person who had to eat tons and tons of food. And if I didn't, I was upset and mad and sad. And anyway, I'm going to really dig into all of my ways I stopped overeating, how you can stop overeating, all these like fail safes and strategies I use. They're really simple. They're just, it's simple and it's science-based. And so um, you can stop being that picture. That's me eating a salad. <laughs> so a quick recap of everything we learned today, especially if you're coming in late. Um, some calories are more easily digested, absorbed, or stored as fat. Your goal is to eat foods with a higher cost of digestion, not a lower one, because remember processed foods are like speeding. They have a lower cost of digestion. Labels are false friends, because you're going to get calories on the back end, and you'll never know what those are, so you can't even count them perfect. The two best things to eat, apples and potatoes. And if you are an overeater or you think you're overeating, and you probably are, even if you don't think you are, sorry, I know I'm being harsh, um, overeating is a culprit. It just is. Use my secret strategy. Use the thermic effect of feeding for good. Use it to work for you. Pick the things that will have the, you know, more digestion involved. Uh, oh, going back to the apple, chew it. If you chew it instead of slicing it, you'll get more calories just by doing that. So anyway, thank you for joining me through this incredible opportunity to get stuck with my blueprint. I'm telling you, I've just packaged it all up for you guys because I don't want anyone else to suffer anymore. It really frustrates me that there's all this misinformation out there and I'm so mad that I was overweight for so long and I didn't need to be. Why didn't I get into the science sooner? But it's okay. You guys are going to get to take the shortcut that I didn't have because I'm happy to be the one to plow through. Um, so it's coming next. Um, since you guys voted on overeating, I'm going to do, like I said, the four easy things I do to prevent overeating at mealtimes. Oh my God. 
five wacky truths about hunger. This is going to blow up your mind. We're going to have a little bit of science. Um, how to reset your appetite. I've been promising that since the first video. So you stop overeating because the strategies are great. The strategies to prevent overeating are very helpful, but to like just not do it anymore at all is even better. I'm going to show you exactly what I eat a day with pictures. If you're live with me, you can see it go happening right now on Instagram. I'm also going to have a video of it for people who watch this video later or weren't live with me because, you know, Instagram deletes stuff. And like I said, incredible opportunity for you to get unstuck. So now I need your help. I need you to know, I need you to tell me which of my strategies from today's presentation are you going to apply to yourself today? You have to pick one. Leave a comment below right now telling me what strategy you're going to do because you'll do it. If you don't comment, you won't do it. Like apply this to yourself, make a commitment, just do this for yourself right now. Plus it will really help me because if I know what kind of strategies you like, I'll include them in the next video. So help me help you. So these are your seven strategies and this was basically the cliff notes from this video. What are you gonna do? Are you going to one, substitute rice for pasta sometimes? Two, use a potato instead of bread sometimes. Three, eat an apple if I'm hungry and need a snack. Four, Eat a sweet potato or oats like Laura. Five, eat hummus with vegetables instead of a protein bar like Jeff. Uh, six, assume processed foods have more calories than the label says. Seven, potato, apple, whatever green thing is in the freezer can be a meal. So which of these strategies, which one, just pick one, are you going to apply to yourself today? And like I said, this will make you accountable. It'll mean you'll do it. It'll stay in your brain. It's crazy the science of how just like typing in a little number will actually make it happen for you. And also, if I know what you like and what strategies are working or you're attracted to, it will really help me with the big, massive video I'm going to do on overeating next. And so, like, let me know because we're all in this together. Oh, good. You guys are answering. And um, I did, like I said, send all of this out in a newsletter to my list earlier today. And I, you know, they polled. So here are some of the early results that are coming in. And so, uh, and what I'm seeing from the comments right now is it looks like everyone's picking eat an apple if I'm hungry and need a snack. It is a really great strategy. So I'm glad to see that one's good. But keep, like I said, keep telling me which ones you're going to do. It really, really helps. It'll make the next video amazing. And I'm just going to leave this up here now so that you guys can continue to vote on your strategy. And also, these are the seven big tips from this thing. So this is kind of like your cliff notes, like take a picture or whatever. If you found this video helpful, if it spoke to you, if my story has spoken to you, please share it with others. I really, this is all free information and I really want to get it out there. I really want to help people. I want to make sure everyone loses weight, like it stops all these myths about overeating and vegan being magic. And vegan is magic. There's so much magic, but it's a skinny bitch set was the first book I read and ooh, I wish I had read something else. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm thankful. I'm so glad I'm vegan 11 years and the impact it's had, but I, God, I wish I would have known this science 11 years ago. <laughs> I just wish I would have, I would have saved myself so much grief and so much self-hate talking feeling like I was a fraud and a failure, which I'm not, but now I get to connect with all of you guys about my story. It's meant so much to me. I got so many messages on Instagram yesterday and through Facebook saying, Lindsay, your story is the same as mine. And as much as I don't want that to be, I don't want anyone else to experience what I have. I, I'm so happy that you now know you're not alone and you're not. There's so many, so many people are going through this and struggling with this. You're not alone and you're not at fault. And, um, it, there's a way out and you can use science to do it. And it, this has been the greatest joy of my life, figuring all this stuff out. And I'm so excited to share more with you. Um, thank you for letting me be an inspiration and be of service and teach you. And thank you for being as fascinated. Uh, so keep voting. Like I said, keep telling me what it is that you like. And I will be with you again soon, teaching you about all of the overeating strategies I use and how to reset your appetite. Talk soon.